Good morning, and thanks for taking time off your busy schedule to tune in into this exciting webinar. Like any other disruption, this is an interesting piece of technology that will take the business world by storm. We will sum this webinar with a web demo that will quantify our claims. Hi, I'm Sunil Jha, Senior Vice President at Path Infotech Australia, and I will be your host this morning. Before we go ahead, I would like to remind you all of some housekeeping so that we can run this webinar with the least interruptions. Although we have put, a, put all of you on mute, please ensure you are always on mute and that there is at least as the, the least amount of background noise at your end. When we come to Q&A session, you will be able to type in your questions in the question box in your navigation pane, and we will be sending in the recordings to you post the webinar. We understand that not all of you are IT professionals, so our aim will be to make this session as informative and educational for you. This webinar is brought to you in collaboration between Oracle Australia and Path Infotech. I don't think anyone needs any introduction to Oracle. However, by way of introduction, Path Infotech is an IT solutions and services provider and an Oracle Gold Partner. We have been in the marketplace for over 25 years and have existing customer relationships in different geolocations, including India, Singapore, USA, and Australia. My colleague Nikhil will talk a little bit more about our services and expertise towards the end of the session. Today's webinar will be split into three subsections. In the first session, we will have Dr. Bhuvan Undhelkar talk about big data, data analytics, and new age databases or data warehouses. He will touch upon how the new world of machine learning and artificial intelligence is impacting our commercial environments and what is the future of autonomous machines and databases in our business world. Dr. Bhuvan Unhelkar is a professor and lead IT faculty at University of South Florida in Sarasota. Bhuvan is also the founder of Method Science and Platify.com. He has authored over 20 books, some of them being on big data strategies, agile practices, etc. Fellow of the Australian Computer Society, IEEE senior member, life member of Computer Society of India and BMA, Bhuvan has been involved in many IT-related associations. He has also had a very strong association with Rotary Clubs, not only in Australia, but also in Sarasota, where he is a past president. Bhuvan will talk about five most important things that impact your business. Bhuvan's session will be followed by Sumit Khanna of Oracle Australia. Uh, Sumit has spent 15 years at Oracle and is part of the solution consulting team. Uh, Sumit will share with you how autonomous data warehouse, uh, or ADW as we call it, works and can be implemented in your current environment. The last session will be conducted by Dr. Nikhil Jain of Path <coughs> Infotech who will share more information on past capabilities and the challenges that organizations such as yours face with regards to data analytics, cloud infrastructure, machine learning, etc. Nikhil will talk about the different stages of technology adoption and how we can assist some of our clients transition to ADW in a painless and seamless way. Anyway, without any further jibber jabber, I will pass on the mic to Bhuvan. Bhuvan, please take it from here. Thank you, Sunil, and uh, good morning, everyone. I would like to start by thanking Path Infotech and Oracle and those who are hosting this webinar to invite me to essentially share with you what I would consider a vendor neutral view on the direction in which the whole domain of databases is going. When I had a look at uh, the issues and concerns of the many participants in this uh, webinar, I realized, as Sunil mentioned, that neither is everyone here a techie, nor is your interest in only technology. So I guess 
we are having this discussion to understand where and how databases could add value to what we do in business. So in this particular slide, and I have kept figure 9.3 up on the right to highlight that this is directly picked up from my book uh, titled Big Data Strategies for Agile Business by CRC Press. And in the chapter on <clears throat> databases, I have highlighted how we are moving into the world of not only structured data, but also via the no SQL domain into the unstructured data space. The challenges that we are facing is high volume, no denial of, of that particular challenge. But if it was simply uh, a few terabytes or petabytes, perhaps we could have found underlying patterns in that historical data much easily. The challenge is complemented and exacerbated because of high velocity. If we consider a simple example of a A380 flight across the Pacific or Atlantic, it easily generates one petabyte of data. So one petabyte in approximately 12 to 14 hours is a very high velocity of data. How can a business make sense out of that data? Then comes the variety. We have not only the challenge of analyzing uh, transactions, but also blogs, emails, customer feedbacks written in plain English and so on. And finally, the veracity or the authenticity of what we are trying to analyze. So this puts in picture the challenges that we are facing in the world of big data. Next, please. <clears throat> so if we then look at uh, the database world, I would prefer to call it database 3.0 matching with data uh, with the web 3.0 as we call it, uh, especially in the era of machine learning, artificial intelligence, and even blockchains. So what is it that presents additional challenges? And being a, a professor in this domain, I have the, the, the privilege of wearing both uh, industry hat through my consulting gigs and researcher hat as an academic. We are finding more and more that the challenges of security, Collaboration and optimization of databases um, are the ones that are going to need a lot more than simply human intelligence. A lot more perhaps than simply coding a set of algorithms and leaving them there to continue to secure our databases, enable access to different other databases and performance tuning or, or, or optimization. Next one, please. <clears throat> so what are the approaches we can take? Again, I have highlighted here how um, additional complexities of users at different levels in different locations requiring uh, the databases to provide answers to different objectives that these users have continues to add to the challenge. I have placed here a time t going to zero, indicating how the results that are expected are almost instantaneous. Well, that's the demand. Can a database satisfy those demands? Can a database be secure, be collaborative with other sources of data, such as, for example, in setting up uh, or gaining insights from a database to decide in a banking domain whether the interest rates uh, should be increased or not for a particular mortgage domain, it is not enough for the databases to provide historical data going past 10, 15, 20 or 50 years. 
in the age of big data, we expect our databases to have access usually on the cloud. In fact, invariably on the cloud, in my experience, to go and tap into weather data, sports data, many other uh, domains of data that we would usually not have considered if it was only uh, a decision related to interest rates. So that is where we need our databases to be smart, our databases to be able to understand based on their past experiences, what is it that the user, the business is going to look for. Our data uh, uh, storages are no longer only storages. They need to be able to suggest to us what we are looking for. And that's where my word that I have coined autonomy of databases comes into play. I have also highlighted optimization. Performance tuning has been both the, the bane and the blessings of database administrators for decades now. But again, we reach a stage where due to high velocity and variety, it is not possible to handle the challenges of optimization unless the database architecture itself has certain amount of intelligence. And that's where we are leading into in terms of the way we handle these challenges or complexities. Okay. Next one, please. <clears throat> so I do want to highlight the fact that when it comes to embedding intelligence in databases, it is not only limited to uh you know managing the databases there are in my opinion two distinct aspects of application of machine learning in databases database domain <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> one of which is what i have been mentioning which is how we apply intelligence how we apply machine learning to enable the databases to manage themselves to store to process, to optimize, to collaborate, and to secure themselves. This is inward facing machine learning in practice. But if we can handle that, then the application domain expands quite a bit. I have highlighted some examples here, which I have been personally involved with. Autonomous cars, there is a very well equipped lab in Sofia University in Japan and I'm dealing with the, the, the head of uh, that particular lab in terms of autonomous cars. Medical image recognition happening in Florida in particular. I am part of University of South Florida where that particular research is going on and then speech recognition and translation. So these are the various ways in which we can apply a intelligent database in practice. Next one, please. So to lead into what a practical database can do, I have highlighted uh, uh, the three aspects out of five that are going to be of value. Connecting with varied data sources. I give you an example of connecting with uh, weather and sports data when we are taking a decision around interest rates. Security, enabling dynamic access the levels of users, the type of users, their behavior, uh, their past history can be uh, recorded in an intelligent way by the database to allow dynamicity in access. And finally, continuous automated fine tuning. So these are some of the conceptual bits that I wanted to share with you. Um, perhaps you will get more idea of how these concepts are implemented in a practical database. So that's what I wanted to share with you. Thanks everyone for listening. I'll hand it over to the moderator. Thank you, Bhavan. And this is really, very insightful, uh, good information. And of course, uh, hopefully we can lead in into the technology piece where, um, where the, the tool can actually help businesses uh, get into the autonomous side of the business. I have Sumit Khanna from Oracle who will take up from here. Sumit, on to you.
Okay, great. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I hope everyone is just as excited today as I am. Uh, the theme for the next 15 minutes would be Think Autonomous, and I hope everyone can see my screen, including the team from Path Infotech. Starting with the theme Think Autonomous, let's take a step back from this webinar and let's think about it. We are in November, and it's just about the time that we, we all need a break and, um, and then go on a Christmas holiday. And if I could just take an example, and or if all of us wanted to go on a holiday in Hawaii, and with just with 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 that th thought process, if everything around our life could organize and take us on a holiday in Hawaii, how good that would be? And that that's why I call it think autonomous. If everything in your life organizes automatically, autonomously with the thought of going on a holiday and puts you on a holiday. So let's come back from a holiday and let's look at why uh, autonomous makes sense in the world of database. We, we at Oracle have been on this journey of autonomous for now about 20 years. And it wasn't until more recently this year that this journey has been achieved or completed. Uh, we have completed this journey at Oracle uh, in 2018. Starting back with Oracle databases uh, back 20 years ago with early releases 9i, we started to introduce and mature many sophisticated automation capabilities ranging from memory management to, to be able to monitor your workloads and tuning. All of those capabilities today are used in autonomous database. But it's not just the database management that uh, we have been automating at Oracle. We have also spent the last 10 years or more actually working on the infrastructure behind the database, uh, which provides the best platform or, uh, for Oracle databases as they are, uh, as, as, uh, as our engineer systems are the only pre-configured, pre-tested, and optimized platforms for the databases. So we have been on this journey of building the engineer systems infrastructure for 20 years. And they are used behind the scenes today uh, with aut autonomous capability. So what is autonomous? Uh, and why does it complete the journey for us? Autonomous today is a sum total of complete infrastructure automation, complete database automation, and lastly, automated data center operations, which have got machine learning, embedded and built into it. So with those three pillars, infrastructure automation, database automation, and uh, automated operations within the data center gives us the net new product called Oracle Autonomous Database that you can spin up in less than 30 seconds and in as less as four steps. Autonomous is actually a family of cloud services with each member of the family optimized by workload. The first member in the family to become available was in March of this year and was called Autonomous Data Warehouse and has been optimized for analytical workloads such as Data Warehouse, Data Maps, or a Data Lake capability. The second member in the family that has just become available is autonomous transaction processing. Autonomous transaction processing is optimized for transaction processing or mixed workload environments and makes an excellent platform for new application development. The benefits of autonomous data warehouse, it's easy, it's fast, and it's elastic. And I'll go through some of these benefits in detail in the next few slides. So let's start with the easy first. It's easy because it allows you to connect and integrate with your data sources that you have today or you may have in the future. It allows you to load and access the data that you need at the click of a button and gives you a 360-degree view of the business. And it's fast because 
it really runs on the extra data capability, which are our ingenious systems. You can offload heavy data workloads using ELT on the engineered boxes, uh, and your analytical queries can run at lightning speeds on the uh, extreme performance infrastructure, which is uh, being used to run these uh, the, the autonomous capability behind the scenes. And really, it's elastic. Uh, with the hand on my heart, I, I could probably say there is no one out there who could scale up and down your databases with zero downtime. So we, we at Oracle have got this autonomous capability, and our secret sauce really is that we can scale up the database and scale it, and, and, and scale it back without zero downtime. Most of the other people can scale up and scale down. And our differentiator essentially is that we can do it with zero downtime because for others to scale up and scale down, there is a window of a downtime. And often people are confused and lost between aut automatic and autonomous. And I would like an opportunity today to clarify there is actually a difference between autonomous and automatic. And let's take the analogy of a car. So features that have been built in the cars today, things like uh, cruise control, uh, warning for lane changes and emergency stopping, I call them as automatic features. They are not autonomous. And the reason they are not autonomous is because you can't simply jump in the car and tell the car your destination where you want to go and the car takes off and takes you there with all automatic features being applied as the car takes you on the journey. Coming back to the case of a database, likewise, the features of storage management, repository management, um, uh, SQL plan management are automatic features and we take, it, we take these features forward to the autonomous layer by telling the database, what goals do you want the database to implement? And the system behind the scenes goes and implements all the goals. And that goes back to my previous theme of going on a holiday. You simply think in your head that you want to go on this holiday in Hawaii and everything in your life organizes autonomously and puts you on this holiday journey. And that's the journey with database. You tell, it, tell the goals to the database and you're on that journey to achieve those goals. The autonomous data warehouse uh, is also supported by a rich data warehouse ecosystem because we understand one size only fits one. And your ecosystem today may be very different to the ecosystem that another customer is running. So with the rich ecosystem support, support available, uh, we could probably connect to, actually we can connect to a lot of the other BI tools that are out there in the market. Um, including the data integration tools, there, is, there isn't a reason that you, should, you shouldn't be embracing autonomous data warehouse. Some of the other rich cloud services um, that goes hand in hand with autonomous data warehouse capabilities are autonomous analytics cloud, data integration cloud, and uh, there, is, there are a range of other services that we can uh, talk about, uh, but that's for another day. The autonomous capability comes out of the box, out of the factory with free, uh, or uh, I should say, uh, best of the breed visualization tools available out there. So with the data visualization, you can put the data and then convert the data to the outcomes and you're in, in, in instant, uh, instantly able to generate the visualization that helps you tell a story to your internal and external customers. Uh, for those of you who, who are on the journey of becoming a data scientist, or are actually data scientists, we do have the support for the machine learning, artificial intelligence, and natural language support built into the product. Based on Apache Zeppelin, 
you can have your notebooks, uh, uh, Zeppelin not, uh, notebooks, which can be shared, and, and you can collaborate with your peers. It's built on the common UI for data scientists, and then you can use multiple source services behind the scenes. Going to the support for the other BI platforms out there, and like I said earlier, one size only fits one. Today, you could be a customer who is already using Tableau or who could be using Altrix or Informatica. We actually support all the vendors out there. You don't have to replace them to embrace autonomous capability from Oracle. We can work hand in hand with whether it's a Click or a Tableau or even if you are a customer of uh, Oracle today using Oracle Business Intelligence. And likewise, uh, uh, there are other tools which are not up here on this slide, which we can also support and work with. So do not panic if you don't see a tool that is that you're using today and it is not up here. We can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation how we can support that. Last but not the least, I would like to leave you with a couple of use cases uh, where autonomous could be used. If you're wondering, well, uh, the it's, it's great. Well, what what can I do with it? So there are a couple of use cases around it, the first one being, you could bring in your current uh, uh, data maps, the data maps that you have today, load them in and move away from the infrastructure and hardware and let the data maps manage themselves autonomously. It could also serve as a platform or a sandbox platform for data scientists out there. So that's the second use case uh, for the people who can't uh, way to embrace machine learning. And last but not the least, data lakes around the world have become the new normal. And uh, we can also support the data lake capabilities uh, for your business needs. So those are straight away the uh, use cases which I think can be embraced. Uh, and then we can hit the ground running with those use cases. At this stage, I would like to take you through a short video demonstration of autonomous. Uh, and I'm going to switch screens here so that I can play this for you from this screen here. With Oracle Autonomous Data Warehouse Cloud, discover how fast and scalable your data warehouse can be and how easily your data comes to life with visualizations in Oracle Analytics Cloud. Let's begin by creating a new data warehouse. After logging in, open the Autonomous Data Warehouse Cloud Service Console. The welcome screen features helpful content to quickly get you started. Move forward into the console, then click on Create Instance. Name your database, choose the number of CPUs, edit storage amounts for the data warehouse, specify the admin password, and hit create. It's that easy. The autonomous system takes care of all the hard work behind the scenes. Oracle auto configures your database with optimal settings, provisioning a high performance database based upon Oracle's Exadata architecture, meaning the system is fully encrypted and secure with high availability and automatic backups, all in a matter of seconds, whether the database was four or 100 CPUs. Check on the status and see everything's ready to go with options to stop or resize the instance or delve into a world of details. With seamless integration to Oracle Autonomous Data Warehouse Cloud, Oracle Analytics Cloud lets us put this new data warehouse to the test. This sample star schema contains massive sales history information to illustrate performance and scalability. Let's examine a typical business analyst report, profit by brand and regions. Running against 6 billion records, this report took 100 seconds with a 4 CPU data warehouse. But what if that just isn't fast enough for your business? No problem. We can simply and quickly adjust the number of CPUs via a custom call to a REST interface. After refreshing the report, process time drops from 100 to just 13 seconds. Oracle Autonomous Data Warehouse remains fully online, allowing other users to continue their queries uninterrupted, zero downtime required. 
Oracle delivers unmatched autonomous performance with the promise of zero tuning required, a whole new ballgame for database experience. With Query Speed now optimized, let's explore a world of visualizations in Oracle Analytics Cloud. Dashboards are fully interactive. By hovering over map regions, we can view each country's average revenue. By clicking a donut's component, corresponding regions highlight on the map. Best of all, these visualizations can easily be delivered to a mobile device. Easily interact with the data by tapping into built-in analytics. Right-click and quickly add a trend line to the bar chart. Oracle Analytics leverages machine learning and natural language processing to autonomously suggest insights and visualizations and answer questions. Build new visualizations by simply describing the information you're looking for, like sales by product. Then, breaking down the profit by customer segment. The possibilities are endless. Finally, Autonomous Data Warehouse Cloud is uniquely cost-effective. Only pay for the resources you need, from a small set of business users to global enterprises. Easily shut off CPUs when your data warehouse is not in use for massive savings. Oracle Autonomous Data Warehouse Cloud. Easy, fast, and elastic for a complete business solution. Welcome to the new frontier of cloud data management. So with that, I'll just go back to my last slide. Uh, uh, for those of you who can't uh, wait to try this, uh, you could go to this URL up on the slide, cloud.oracle.com uh, slash try autonomous database, and uh, you could today instantiate a free trial. And uh, we, we, are, we at Path Infotech and Oracle are here to help you through the trial journey. I'll pass it back to the team from Path Infotech at this stage. Thank you, Sumit. This is really great. The video obviously demonstrates how easy it is to use and to implement, um, including the elasticity that you talked about earlier. I'll now hand over uh, to Nikhil Jain from Path Infotech, who will talk a little bit about who we are and um, what we have done within the ADW space. Over to you, Nikhil. Thanks, Anil. So um, I think I should thank uh, Bhuvan and Sumit to set the stage for me. And I really find myself in a, a very logical transition where we have heard about four Vs from uh, Bhuvan and how Oracle as a technology company has delivered it in a product called ADW that we are talking about today. And uh, as a third stage, what I believe that as much as uh, of bearing a concept from a researcher's standpoint as well as a company who has invested and built a product uh, it's very important to understand that once the product is built uh, or the concept has been conceived uh, there is a very important third step that comes into picture is how uh, and with what precision that product is delivered to the market and i believe that's the point where we as path infotech comes into picture as a precision delivery partners for Oracle, and that's where our strength lies. So, um, uh, next slide, please. Okay, so uh, there is a lot of text on this slide, but I'll try to figure out a couple of uh, highlighting points that, as uh, Sunil also shared earlier, that we have 25 plus years of experience, 500 plus employee base and we work out of four major geographies that is india us australia and singapore and apart from this uh, it is uh, important to understand that we follow all international standards like iso and cmmi to ensure our delivery is seamless and uh, it is delivered to the precision now again i'll i'll put on uh, back a similar point that having a nuclear device design is good but the precision with which it is delivered to the uh, battlefield is makes it uh, a compelling story or makes the story complete, right? So that's the point where we as Path Infotech comes into picture. Next slide. Now, the first thing that I always uh, say or ask that whenever a new technology comes into the market and uh, we take it or rather we help uh, Oracle to take it to the market, I think we 
face a lot of questions uh, from uh, the prospects or the users or the organization who want to embrace the new technology. So typically, if you really look at it, the first thing that we understand is who is going to own my data, right? So a couple of questions like if I put my data on cloud, who is going to be the owner? Or rather, if I say what's going to be the cost after two years of time? Or if I have a little bit more doubts, I can ask that after two years or after some time, if I want to come out of that cloud, how easy it's going to be and how flexible I will be to make a decision whether to stay with the provider or come out of it. So these are some of the, you can say, uh, pointed questions that we face and we get from the end customers and the users. Um, yes, definitely there are, there can be plenty more questions, but these are some of the questions that uh, we managed to put it on the slide, but definitely it is going to be a food for thought for you. And you may continue to ask questions on our question uh, chat box, and you can continue typing there as soon as you uh, get something clicked in your mind. Hopefully these questions can start your thinking and you can start initiating asking questions. Next slide. So typically when, as a delivery partner, when we go to market with a technology uh, like ADW, we have seen uh, customers in different stages, right? So typically if we classify the different stages, we have seen that people who are into evaluation stage, people or organizations who have already initiated the journey, or rather the, you can say extreme cases where organization has adapted new technology and they are actually going ahead and fully uh, consuming the offerings and reaping the benefits. So I'll take a couple of seconds here to explain or understand where we empower our users or empower our customers at various stages. So if you really look at the evaluation part of it, what we have done with some of our customers, help them doing a POC, that's proof of concept, piloting, prototypes. So those are the things usually the customers do when they are evaluating any product. With respect to the initiated journey, what we have seen, uh, you can say, it, it can again be, you can uh, consider it as a natural progression that any organization who is deciding to embark on a cloud journey from on-prem, they prefer going hybrid as a first step. Once they go hybrid and after some time they realize that yes, it's getting benefit, they are getting benefits out of it and they are now ready to move 100% on cloud, then they go into an adapted stage. Now this transition from evaluation stage to initiated stage, to adopted stage. So every stage, there is a role where a delivery partner, as Path Infotech, we come into picture and we do handhold our customers at every stage, allowing them, giving them a space to get answers for their questions and allowing them to ask more questions. Now, we also at the back end, so we have a role to play to bridge a gap between uh, the enterprise organization, Oracle, as well as the customer. So we play a very important role in between and we help them bridge this gap and adapt and embrace this technology fully. Next slide. So typically, how is that path in Protect comes into picture at various stages? So this is again, by virtue of our experience and exposure in the marketplace, and how we have done some of the successful executions at our customer places and how we handled, handholded them. So if you really look at the evaluation stage, then there are different steps and stages where customers go uh, in stages, uh, as a, you can say again, the natural progression that we get into their stage, we try to do a discovery session. We try to understand how feasible a particular technology is for their environment. So feasibility can be both commercial, technical, right? And once those uh, feasibility status and standards are set, then we move to a next logical step. We call it as a proof of concept or rather proving that this technology in action can really work within your environment. And we go ahead one step further, scoping out the proof of concept and then executing the POCs for them. 
so this is something which helps them uh, becoming confident that a technology like adw can really work out well within their environment regardless of whether they are sitting on prem or they are sitting on any other cloud or they are using technologies or tools like tableau power bi or any other uh, business intelligence tools now same thing happens when you go to a second stage where we talk about initiation now once the proof of concept is delivered and yes the business is confident to go ahead with this particular uh, implementation then we help them to initiate now again initiation is also uh, something which really takes uh, time and effort to do a discovery and there is a feasibility phase during the initiation as well now once these two things are completed and we have successfully identified the feasibility structure both technical commercial and definitely uh, there are questions asked related to roi as well so we we help the customers to answer those questions during the phases as well and then we start identifying that if we have to define a project scope how it's going to be will it be a single department that's going to go live or that's going to embrace the technology as a first step or it is going to be a complete organization wide rollout so we always prefer and suggest out of our experience that it is always a good idea to start small and once you have embraced and understood and adapted the technology you start expanding within the organization and that's the point where we always suggest and we embrace and handhold the customers the same thing happens for the adaption part of it now once a successful rollout happens we execute the project and customers are reaping benefits but yes every technology requires a continuity plan and that's where we as a partner comes into picture and we handhold the customers not only during the delivery phase or execution phase but once the project is successfully delivered we start planning how it is going to be supported for next 2 years or 5 years time frame while while the customer is using it so that's how we move forward step by step along with the pace and the journey next slide now the important part that comes into picture is what is that we have done so this is something which is again a pointed question that that we get from our customers that okay you are bringing in a new technology uh, that is autonomous can you share with us what is that you have done what is your past experience around this particular specific technology so i'll take a couple of seconds to to uh, explain this particular scenario so this particular uh, proof of concept was executed for one of our large groups uh, which has a focus around staffing and the key pain areas for this particular customer was that they were using excel as their major data analytics tool and the data volume was quite huge now some of the critical challenges what what anybody can think of if your data volume is increasing that okay uh, you have a huge amount of data and it is all pumped in into different excel sheets and it is spread across the networks now everybody is using excel sheet and they are driving their own insights using that data now the first challenge is that you don't have a single source of truth that's one challenge that you face the second challenge that you face is that the insights is not real time so if you are trying to find out how many staff members you need to deliver or you need to plan for next one week of time or next one year of time you have to spend almost a week with struggling with the data and find out that insight now that again becomes a challenge so single source of truth data which is spread across the network and you don't have real time access to it now these all things come by virtue of high volume of data so now again i will try to connect the dots with bhuvan where their reality is the volume or the velocity with which today the data gets generated either by virtue of iot devices sensors or a lot of video cameras that are sitting around you this data is excessive volume the volume is too high now what happens that when you get such a high volume of data you need to have a system that is scalable 
that can crunch the data at a very high speed. Now that's the point where Oracle ADW fits in with they are using Exadata machines, which is truly optimized to work with Oracle workloads, right? And they are high performance, right? So one is high performance, you have a high scalability uh, uh, cloud available offering, cloud offering available where uh, you can increase the CPU, how uh, Sumit has shown in the demo, where you have a single slider where you can go from a four CPU to 16 CPU in a matter of, I think, time is not the essence here. You just slide and you are scaled up. And uh, you can really see the volume with which the data gets crunched and the time it is taking to execute that data. Right. So that's the point we are, we'd like to make. And with this particular customer, we have gone ahead implementing ADWC, and uh, we have gone ahead creating some of the dashboards for them uh, within this POC scenario. Next slide. Now, I hand it over the session back to the organization or organizers. Thank you. Thanks, Nikhil. That was really insightful. And um, definitely it throws a lot of light around how ADW works and, of course, how we can help uh, you across. Uh, there will be another slide after this, but, of course, I'm opening the floor to questions. Uh, if you have any, please feel free to uh, put your questions into the question pan and we'll address those. Uh, questions can be addressed to uh, either Bhuvan or Sumit or Nikhil or anybody or any specific question that you may have. Okay, so uh, Sunil, I would like to ask one question from my side. Uh, right, so I think uh, this question can be taken up either by Bowen or Sumit, but uh, I think I'll bring this question from my earlier slide where I'll say that who is owning my data if it goes on cloud? That is one. Another is uh, if I want to move out of this cloud after two years of time, how flexible it is. So maybe Sumit or Bhuvan, you, if you can uh, take up this question and help me get the answers, probably this is the question that a lot of customers ask us, and I would like to put it forward to you. So let me make a attempt first. Uh, first of all, thanks for asking the question. And uh, of course, ownership of data, as we all know in Australia, is uh, you know becoming very interesting. We also in America, I'm finding it, it is a little lax as compared to Australia and Europe. Europe is now coming under GDPR, General Data Protection uh, Regulation. So I guess the question needs to be broken down into from whose perspective you are uh, worried about or concerned or interested in the data. Are you a end user customer who is concerned about the data going on the cloud? Well, on one end, we have uh, Facebook and Twitter, which is really open for all. On the other end, we have our banking applications, our um, um, health data, you know, electronic patient record and so on, which is highly secured. And as we move forward with blockchain, it has its own pluses and minuses. So in terms of a end user, uh, personally, I think the concern depends on which application might, uh, uh, am, I, am I talking about. You know, collaboration with friends and all, there is no such thing as privacy. When it comes to EPR, when it comes to banking, the database vendor plays a role. And in those five factors that I had mentioned, one is security. So when it comes to application of machine learning and artificial intelligence, the database vendor, the database provider takes a certain responsibility just as much as say um, a Suzuki vendor or a Subaru vendor is applying uh, machine learning to autonomous uh, features you know autonomous driving as against automated driving that was mentioned earlier so this is my take 
it depends on from whose perspective whether it is from end user perspective then depends on the application from a vendor perspective then there is a need to provide those features that will enable intelligent sorting of security issues dynamic access <clears throat> depending on the type of user and the type of organization this is my generic take on uh, who owns data and what should be done over thanks pavan i i commit do you have anything i'll just perhaps add uh, uh, who is the owner of the data in the cloud well customer uh, the ownership remains with the customer i think Uh, the it is it is about where the data is hosted so based on our uh, product uh, and solution that we have discussed today uh, we'll let the customer own the data uh, and we can host it in a data center of your choice so no matter where you are in the globe uh, located in the in the world we can work out a data center where you feel comfortable uh, hosting the data and second part of the question how easy it is to switch from one cloud to another well uh, i think let's keep it short uh, it's 21st century and uh, the cost of technology adoption couldn't have been any lower than i see today with the arrival of cloud so the cost of switching between clouds uh, is is really uh, minimalistic today and with cloud vendors and then cloud uh, from different vendors connected to each other the first thing is it is doable and the second thing is it doesn't cost you an arm and a leg today to do it so it's it's really cost effective thanks amit any questions from the audience varun can you move to the next slide please So if there are no questions we'd like to thank you all for attending and obviously for staying um for for more than 45 minutes into it uh we have the contact details over here uh you can contact oracle directly you can contact us at path which is contact.au@pathinfotech.com this um the recordings will be shared with you in case you have any questions feel free to come back to us thank you so much for joining in